60 degree temperatures, a bit of bite in the air as another sellout crowd at Notre Dame Stadium, 59,000 plus. To see the tradition continue, the Notre Dame Fighting Irish hosting one of their longtime rivals, the Michigan State Spartans. And we welcome you aboard to Kenberg with Bob Trumpy. <laughs> These are the kinds of days you're so pleased that your assignment is as a sportscaster. And these Notre Dame Fighting Irish and all week long this campus of bubble after the win at Michigan. Largest crowd in college football history, underdogs, and uh, Lou Holtz comes home with a, with a victory against the number two ranked uh, Wolverines and uh, with a, uh, a new framing of the quarterback, a new understanding of the qualities of Kevin McDougal. Yeah, that's well put. A new understanding appreciation for the quarterback consider that Kevin McDougal last week in front of 106,000 people on the road just his second start before this season he had a grand total of 21 pass attempts at quarterback for Notre Dame last week in watching the tape deck yes he did score twice on runs he executed the offense beautifully not what he did in some instances what he didn't do he didn't throw the interception he didn't pitch when he should have kept it he really matured so much in a game where you expect a young man with a lack of experience uh, in an upset situation in Ann Arbor to kind of throw the ball around he executed beautifully. Well, and George Perlis, who is very proud of his uh, defensive team, and that goes back to his days as the uh, defensive mastermind of the Pittsburgh Steelers in their four Super Bowl championships, he'll have to find a way to stop McDougal and the Irish offense. It doesn't quite have the high power of uh, Lou Holtz teams of uh, past. And Perlis has a quarterback we should talk about. Not as well known, perhaps, because he hasn't had the exposure, but he's got a quick and a strong arm. Yeah, as a matter of fact, he's at the opposite end of the spectrum when it comes to experience from McDougal. Uh, he's a fifth year senior. He is a man who stands tall in that box. He really doesn't have a favorite target. He likes to spread the ball around. Has a good side of the field. Uh, protects the ball very well. And, and in this offense, a guy like Jim Miller, when you've got a great defense, you want a quarterback who is not going to make a big mistake. Jim Miller's that guy. Uh, Jim Miller with two touchdown passes in the win against Kansas in state's opener. Well, uh, another Miller we should talk about because it underlines the strength of Lou Holtz on special teams. They can beat you on kick return. Turns. Yeah, last week it was Mike. That punt return was a backbreaker for the University of Michigan. That's the 18th kick return in the Lou Holtz era for a touchdown, either punt or kickoff return. And Lou said, you know how special my special teams are? On Friday night, the first punch that eats are the special teams. <laughs> <laughs> and on uh, the NBC team, uh, that is uh, John Docker. And we're going to hear from him down on the floor of this uh, Marvelous stadium in just a moment as you see those uh, golden helmets of the Notre Dame uh, Fighting Irish, a nickname, by the way, that goes back to uh, the history of this rivalry with Michigan State. We'll get more on that later. And here comes Lou Holtz and his unbeaten fourth ranked Notre Dame Fighting Irish. And we'll return to Northern Indiana after these words from Welcome back to Notre Dame. We talked about Michigan State's defense, a disappointing eighth in the Big Ten last year. A man who knows it well, a defensive back under George Perlis, back with the Steelers, is John Dockery. Thanks, Dick. You know, and the Steelers under Perlis in the 70s didn't play defense, they waged war. Brutal, attacking, intimidating warfare in a defense that became famous. It's called the Stunt 4 3, and here's the way it works. The Joe Green tackle is offset between the guard and the center. You see him there. In a predetermined move, he slashes across the center to occupy two men, and then the other tackle loops around in a variety of stunts. That allows the middle linebacker free to make the play. And make the play Jack Lambert did for Peerless in the uh, 70s with the Steelers, as the way Jim Morrissey and Percy Snow have done for the Spartans under George Peerless in the 80s. Today, George hopes that his rookie sensation, his freshman linebacker, Reggie Garnett, will make those kinds of plays. It's only his second start, but he's expected to go sideline to sideline and eradicate the Irish runners. And we'll find out if he can do that. But uh, Dick and Trump, and Trump, you know this, if you play a George Perlis team, you better buckle it up because the game will get intense and it will get physical. All right, Doc, and we're ready to go. Michigan State won the toss, deferred in the second half. So teeing it up is a famous football kicking name, Stoyanovich, the younger brother of the Miami Dolphins. Right.
Pompano Beach, Florida. And here are the men who will block for him. Aaron Taylor, Mark Zadabeski, Tim Ruddy, Ryan Leahy, that's a famous name. Yep, the grandson of former coach Frank and Todd Norman at right tech. The backfield for Notre Dame, Lee Beckton and Ray Zellers will start. Bolts has indicated he's going to look at his young runners today. Lake Dawson and Clint Johnson outside. And Deke Kuklevitz will tie in. White jersey Spartan defense that reads this way. Juan Hammonds, Aaron Jackson, he's the Joe Green. Allen is tackle Parker most on the often. Pete Allen and Rich Glover, the front four. Matt Christensen, Reggie Garnett. He's only a freshman. Number 22, the middle linebacker, and Rob Fredrickson had a big game involved in three turnovers against Kansas. Callender and Beller at the corners, Manson and Wasilic at safety. by the Spartans. And at the bottom of the foul, number 89, Juan Hammonds, a junior from Louisville, Kentucky. Yeah, there is a first indication of this stunt in 3-4-3. Three, three. A lot of times, and Lou Holtz told us this, is we're going to run a play and it's going to look ugly. Because they can stunt, and they stunt to stop the run. They can stunt right into the spot where you want to run. And Lou said, we're going to have to be patient. We're going to get beat sometimes, but sometimes we're going to beat the stunt. Four plus. 
before he's stacked up by the Irish. I think one of the things that Michigan State does with this big offensive line, they get nice big splits. I mean, we're talking about the three of the uh, five guys up there are 310 or better. So they get nice wide splits. You can see the size averaging 303 pounds. And look at that little center there, 270. <laughs> What's he doing there? Rick John Dockery said at the outset that anytime you play a George Perlis team, you better buckle your chin strap. A lot of lead blocking by this offense. You saw the fullback come up in there. 49. Abrams, good lead block. Goldberg, again, a tough runner like Thomas. The big hit from the secondary delivered by John Covington, 29, who came up to hit Goldberg. I think uh, Bobby Taylor got away with one there. He hit his hands on Napoleon Outlaw. This is a wonderful fake. You can see the entire defense sucked in. Now Miller, not a guy to run the ball. See the contact there right at the end of the play? See if we can see the contact here. Just a simple out better. There's a, there's a handful of shirt right there by Bobby Taylor. He kept him from uh, getting back to the football. But one of the things Michigan State wants to do is take the underneath stuff. Not be impatient. in front of the middle linebacker Goheen Miller with a nice toss I mean that's that's almost like a run Coleman picked as the most valuable player by his teammates a year ago as a sophomore played a couple of games when Miller was running quarterback so the Spartans threatened deep in Notre Dame territory and on first down a couple of short yards 
Deep Brusich and others there to stop Goldburn. That's uh, George Perlis on the sideline there with, with Thomas, the running back. Now, Perlis doesn't call the offense. That's called by Mo Watts. George Perlis will admit to anybody that wants to listen. I'm the defensive expert here. I bring the offense over to Mo Watts, the offensive coordinator, let him pretty much handle it. Ball at the 12 yard line. Eight and a half minutes remaining in the opening quarter. This has been a long, sustained, successful drive by Jim Miller and the Spartans. Abrams in motion and then the game to Thomas and great blow by that Irish defense. Brian Young, who leads the Irish in sacks and in tackles after two games. There's Mo Watts, the offensive coordinator, hand signals in to Jim Miller, the quarterback. I think I've noticed that Michigan State has run their tight end across the formation on every single play. It's really not had much of an effect on the Irish defense, but part of it is timing for lead blocks. Part of it is to give Jim Miller a key for the defense. This looks like zone, and Bobby Taylor, 21, she's looking in at the quarterback, it's a good giveaway that it's zone. It's unusual to find a defense in one zone inside the 10-yard line, and Michigan State calls the right pattern. Simple in route. And you saw the quickness of arm of Miller. He gets it there in a hurry. Four shots from the one for Michigan State. His uh, grandfather here cheering him on. He credits him as the inspiration of his life, Matt Thomas. He said a man who for over 30 years has not only helped me but work two jobs, make ends meet. And Thomas caps off the 74 yard drive, and Miller was five for six throwing to keep the ball in the D third down conditions. And Thomas trying to continue in the tradition of Michigan State, a 1,000 yard rush for the first place. Tico Duckett was their big running back, and he still rushed for close to a thousand yards. Yeah, 887 yards as a back. Glenn Johnson is the deep man for Notre Dame. They, I, I think they're kicking short here on purpose. They think that Mike Miller is back there in return. This is intentional by Stoyana Bench here at Michigan State. Trying to kick him high and toward the sideline, not allowed. of dragging him down one of the Spartans uh, getting the face mask 18 Marvin Wright a freshman from Saginaw and we have a timeout with 6 37 remaining in the opening quarter 7 nothing state Michigan State 7 Notre Dame with their second position it starts at the 25 yard line after the 5 yard penalty for face mask Is 
hit by Aaron Jackson. Yukini Allen there as well as the two tackles converge and now the penalty. It's a mixed crew, half from the Big Ten, half from the Big East. That whole point of Lou looking for the breakaway back to open up the game. That's why you see all these running backs. John Dockery, I'm just going to make that point. I agree. Hey, uh, Lou is happy with a lot of things, but not with the running backs on his offense. That's why you're seeing Willie really Clark, a defensive player in there for more speed. And that's why we might well be seeing the freshman Robert Farmer, Randy Kinder, Mark Edwards, as uh, Lou Holtz uh, feels while this team and all the veterans can run down. They don't have that breakaway run. In fact, uh, back to the average, it was a four point two and seven point eight in the second. And uh, more movement again. This time it appeared that uh, we'll start the legal procedure Notre Dame. Yeah, the, the two defensive tackles from Michigan State at the last minute, watch these two guys. They change their position, and it affects the offensive line. And they go right back to where they started. It was first and ten. They get a penalty. First and ten. First and ten. Back to first and ten. But there's so much worry on the offensive line with that stunt four three. That nose tackle can just go right across the head of the center, blow up a play. You've got stunts behind it. Take some thought. Some, some presence to handle this stunt four three. Get up, get up.
fumbles. College football just like this and he throws. Burns was wrong. Edge of apoplectic. Willie Clark comes in a tailback behind Zellers. He's the fastest. <laughs> Team was Lake Dawson in the near flat. Early stages, Notre Dame getting plenty of time to throw. Coach Walker was the man finally getting to McDougal. There's Lake Dawson, the only real experienced receiver on this uh, Notre Dame football team. McDougal takes no chances. Uh, he throws it out of bounds. He don't want anybody to catch him. He's not throwing a touchdown pass yet. He's a quarterback. He's here for Notre Dame, but he also.
personal foul, roughing the passer against the defense. The penalty is marked from the end of the last run. Automatic first down. Well, you can't give a team like Notre Dame more than one chance. Watch 75. Makes the spin move. He's going into Google. I think they said it took one too many steps there to hit the quarterback. But that's hard to judge when you've got big, big guys out there going at full speed. It was a late but a foul nevertheless. But Aaron Jackson and with the first down of the 13. Sounded before the kick. Dead ball foul, false start on the offensive line. Repeat the try. Dad goes in. Ready to kill Farmer with a touchdown, capping a 75 yard drive and 14 plays. It took nearly eight minutes. Michigan State's had one possession in the game, and we're into the second quarter more than a minute. Second try back under the left and it's wide to the left. Oh my. So Michigan State maintains the lead seven to six and that five yard penalty could have been costly because it just did skid wide to the left. So Kevin Pendergast try for point no good and with 13 54 left in the first half state seven Irish six. 
They come back consistent with Lou Holtz's strategy. Paul Fiala getting some playing time, and Kevin McDougal there first to congratulate his counterpart as uh, Kimmel with a hand to freshman Robert Palmer and the touchdown. Never gets the list of three. Michigan State with the ball. We don't see any flags. Tomorrow, NFL Live, Lampley, Ditka, Simpson, and Madonna, the stars, and all the information and action from around the league. The feature will be a look at the Raiders' new quarterback. Somehow, it seems strange to see that face in, with that silver black helmet. Jeff Hostetler. He's got the uh, Raiders off to a 2 0 start. Okay, we'll take a very close look at the Raiders. Give us his opinion. They had the ball once, drove down the field and scored. They've been um, strategy, discussing strategy over there on the sideline for a long time. Miller, an outstanding uh, high school pitcher, in fact, drafted by the Kansas City Royals, and uh, we've said the same about Paul Taylor. Punch for the touchdown. It'll be 
second and seven, second and eight. A seven-yard game. Again, great choice by Michigan State's quarterback, Jim Miller. Abrams is the outlet receiver, just runs across the line of scrimmage. Get the ball in the hands of the running back. He breaks the tackle for his own heat. Burris misses him. This kid is a load. Getting the ball, turn his shoulders up. He's going to gain you some yards no matter how far you throw it. Young uh, working on an All-America start in this 1994 year. I'm, I may be proven wrong here on this replay, but Second I don't even think Ryan Young used his arms. I think he just hit the running back so hard. Yeah, it was just his helmet. He didn't even get his arms up there. Bryant is a huge individual. 277. I mean, he's got arms as big as my legs. And there's no question that is a deep throw. That is a deep drop by the quarterback. It was intended to cut a steal or crunch down for Notre Dame, and it didn't work. Oh, 
Kinder. A freshman. And so Lou Holtz giving Kinder a bright talent a chance to play against the Spartans. Uh, Kinder told us that as a young man, uh, walking distance from the Michigan State campus, he spent his life there. He'd go to all the games, basketball and football. And many thought that that's where he would matriculate. It was his second choice. But uh, he said the uh, other day, center now watch Garnett come from the inside out that's one of the reasons he's in there as a true freshman this is a complicated defense but he has such great speed as John Docker said at the top of the show he can fill from tight end to tackle and make those handles behind the line of and that's what George Porter wants Big kid, 220. 
opportunity, but you should see him pursue along the line of scrimmage. The first option of the option does not work. And McDougal keeps it, but doesn't give it to Zellers, and there's Garnett to do the job. And again, credit to McDougal. He makes the right choice. Keeps the ball, take the loss. We'll go back third down. Michigan State. Dead ball foul. Delay of game on the offense. Still third down. Everybody is up here for Michigan State. The corners are up too. It was an 11 man front up there defensively. McDougal had to do something. You see him, he stands up there, calls the audible. Again, the disruption of the George Perlis defense. Make the quarterback and the offense think. Get some five yards on the penalty. Third and 15. Now, third down 15 for the Irish at the 16. Mask and it looked like the chin strap came off. It wasn't violent by any no, means. No, it was not. So a personal foul against the offense, hands in the face mask. It is a second down. Interesting thing about Burkmeyer, too, he's had both knees reconstructed, completely reconstructed. One of those in high school, but the same kind of man Perlis is. Perlis, after that operation, is a you come to Michigan State, you've got a scholarship whether you ever walk or not. See, that, that was pretty convincing. Yeah, the major college football on reconstructed knees, good surgeon. Keep that thing on your head. Uh, Notre Dame uh, with a chance here if they 
stop this ball. That's high enough to get the ball. Yeah. They don't yeah. use a timeout. Hold it. Now 139, third down. Back up, back up. Back up, guys. Back up. Michigan State has got more damage to themselves than Notre Dame has done to them. talk with uh, Lou Holtz. Holtz saying that uh, not only last Saturday was a great trip home. We asked him how long he enjoyed the Michigan win. He said almost halfway home on the bus. Oh, the bus right, yeah. Before I started thinking about Michigan State, but he said it was a big day for the family Holtz and that uh, his 24-year-old daughter announced uh, her engagement on Saturday night. So he said a double victory. That's his fourth and last child. And Family grows. And, and he described his future son in law as a what? A double donor? Double donor. Right, man, got Can you get any better than that? <laughs> we should explain it. Yes. Doesn't have two heads. It's a <laughs> double donor referring to the fact that he got not only his undergraduate degree, but his graduate degree in law here at Notre Dame. And a former uh, athlete himself. As well. Well, last year at this time, Michigan State up at uh, East Lansing, and the fans were grumbling as Notre Dame led 38 to 10. 38 to 10. Back to that last play in the uh, 
completion to the tight end Kreplevitz. You've seen it, but Google does a pretty good job here of just there to watch the people bounce off of man. I mean, he went down, but they felt the impact too. Reggie Garnett, the freshman linebacker, down around the ankles on the 19 yard Season on an interception Everyone. against Northwestern. Hi, Dad. Somebody I asked him, Where's the ball? He's going to frame it. He said, No, that was Northwestern's ball. I had to give that back. Uh, he could keep that ball, Ray Sellers. That's an ugly thing for him.
16 to 7. Here's John Dockery. Coach, what will you say to him at halftime? Oh, I do. I'm not worried about halftime. We'll be all right. I think we can score. I'm not worried about the 16 points. We got a couple of adjustments to make in our uh, defense against the run. I think we can play it straight this half. We don't need too many games. Shut down the running game. Put some points on board. We'll be all right. Thank you, Coach. Good luck. Dick. All right, Doc. Uh, Perlis uh, saying games meaning stunts and tricks that they'll play them head on. So the Irish to the locker room with the lead. We go to New York and Hannah Storm. And uh, I think George Perlis told us that he thought he could shut down the run. Well, when Kinder came in, he showed a, a great deal of speed. And you're going to get this very close up. Watch Kinder uh, doing an excellent job. Excellent blocking up front. Kinder doesn't have to do a whole bunch. A nice little move there. Protecting the ball like all good freshmen could, should if they want to ever carry it again. This is a nice run by Kinder. Now, as you look at it in the All-22, watch the block of the right guard, Leahy. He takes the nose tackle, the defensive tackle just completely out. If I could clear the telestrator, we could run the replay. Can't seem to get it cleared. Great block. Just wiped out that side. And Kinder, who had 36 yards rushing on only four carries, the rest of the Notre Dame team, 34 yards and 15 carries. And the tradition does continue. The man who threw the block, Ryan Leahy, there's his granddaddy, the great Frank Leahy, the coach here. And they're celebrating, as this program would indicate, the 40th anniversary of the 1953 championship team. Art Hunter, Ralph Guglielmi, uh, Latner won the Heisman Award, uh, Neil Wharton. Uh, I think I had players. their football card. I'll bet you <laughs> well, what does Michigan State do? I was a little bit surprised by George Perlis saying we got to stop the run. They did a pretty good job on the run. It was the pass that seemed to burn him, and uh, we'll get more on that. We understand that John Dockery has the Notre Dame headmaster. Coach, did you see something in the second quarter that allowed you to move the ball so much better offensively? No, it just was obvious after the first time they had the ball, we better play this sucker wide open. And, uh, uh, we, we took advantage of uh, some of the things that they did, but it wasn't anything on coach and our kids executed. Will you keep it wide open in the second half offensively? Well, we will. You know, it depends upon what they do. We, we know we're going to have to score more points to win this football game. Thanks, coach. Thank you. And uh, more points. Uh, Notre Dame uh, stuck on 27 in their first two victories, beating Northwestern 27-12 and then uh, Michigan 27-23. They scored on three of their four possessions and uh, had possession time. See the total yards are in the yards rushing about even but the passing yards by Notre Dame taking advantage of that three deep pretty standard zone by Michigan State and the time of possession that's also considering that Michigan State the first time they had the ball drove 74 yards close to uh, seven minutes of possession that Notre Dame came back and uh, they got the possession time on their side in the first half. Another note from uh, John Dockery. One late note coming here in the locker room for Notre Dame. We talked to the medical people there. And Lake Dawson, remember on that play near the end of the half, took a pretty good hit in the chin. He got his bell rung. He's a little bit woozy. He's come out without his helmet. There's a question as to whether he'll play in the second half or not. Back to you. All right, Doc. And uh, while we talk offense, and we're all guilty of uh, too much emphasis, perhaps, with the team of the ball, Let's not forget that uh, Notre Dame's uh, strength this year and from day one admitted by Holtz and his coaching staff defense and that is a pretty solid defense after the first Michigan State possession. Curious to see how uh, State will move the ball here to open the second half. It wow. should be uh, critical to this uh, game's outcome obviously. Dick and I think the other thing the point we have to make in the first half is that yes the Irish did do some fine things in the first half but Michigan State helped a lot on third and two. At, at the uh, on the plus 35 they go for a touchdown it's incomplete they have to punt the ball away and then there was a big penalty against Michigan State they had a little bit of momentum going that was killed by those two uh, plays second half opens and Pendergast kicking it toward the end zone on a fine catch made by Steve Holman over the shoulder and Holman looking for a block breaks some tackles and fights to the 25. Michigan State in the first half and with a ground game uh, uh, being featured by both sides only four possessions for each team they got the touchdown on the long opening drive couple of punts had a chance there on the uh, one punt that uh, was uh, the end of the third drive when it was third and two but went for the touchdown 
I think if I'm Michigan State offensively, I go right back to my basic game plan. It worked in the first series of this of the first half. Frank Thomas, the tailback behind Jim Miller, the tight end Oregon in motion. Bryce Abrams, the fullback. Thomas smothered, loses a yard. Jim Flanagan, 44, one of the first in there. His daddy. Uh, Star at the University of Pittsburgh, played in the NFL with the Green Bay Packers, has a Super Bowl ring, playing under Vince Lombardi. Uh, 44, not normally a number for a defensive lineman, began as a linebacker. Like his dad, and his dad wore 44. From Sturgeon Bay, Wisconsin. Thomas, 55 yards rushing today for Michigan State. Miller throws on second and 11. Flanagan uh, putting the pressure on, intended for Mill Coleman, but uh, Miller was going down in the grasp of Flanagan as he delivered. And Dick, that's the first time we've seen any real pressure on Jim Miller in this game. I mean, there have been people around him, but not to the point where it's altered his setup or throw. And you see Flanagan coming from the backside, just interrupts the throw by Miller. Number seven for 12 passing. One intercepted, but uh, that was the uh, desperation at the end of the half. Miller underneath. That'll be shy of the first down. Caught by Nigeria Carter, a true freshman from Coconut Creek, Florida. They think he has a tremendous future. That's his first catch with the Spartans. Dick, that was a big defensive series. That sets the tone for this second half. That's exactly what Notre Dame wanted to do. Well, just like Notre Dame opened the game three and out, uh, the second half begins in that manner for Michigan State. Mike Miller, ever dangerous at the 35 of Notre Dame. And I'm sure they'll find away from it. I Good kick this time. Miller checking the oncoming Spartans, fields it at the 25. Horse collared and a flag down as number 23 for Michigan State makes the tackle. Yakini Allen, the defensive tackle. 44 yard punt, no return, but the penalty. Well, that Michigan State was taking a chance there. Personal foul, face mask against Michigan State. If Allen doesn't make that tackle, Mike Miller is gone. And it's a big one, 15 out to the 39-yard line. Got in the face pass against the kicking team. 15 yards to the end of the run. First down. A young man who, when he first came here to Notre Dame, couldn't stand the comparison to him and Rocket Ismail. Went back home. And Mike Miller has come back, and last week paid huge dividends for Notre Dame. They told us yesterday, he said it wasn't until this year. He stayed uh, in Texas during the summer and uh, worked out with Bobby Taylor down in the Houston area. And he said, when I came back this time, I really found out that I missed it. And for the first time, I feel comfortable and happy to be here. It took him a couple of years to get over the usual homesickness and finding his place. Zellers, one of the touchdown makers, and off a good fake. Boy, McDougal carrying out the fake so well. The uh, Spartans, some of them were looking for a pass. An 11 yard gain and a first down at midfield. A lot of missed tackles here. People had opportunities. Zellers make a nice move there, and then look, the defense has just collapsed on the inside on that play for Michigan State. We thought the stunt 4 3 was going to you know, hold up the run. For Notre Dame and hold it up good. It's not measured up so far. Sellers, who entered as a 200 pound freshman, now playing at 228, gets the call again. Not much. Garnett on top, but down underneath. The first hit made by Yakini Allen, a sophomore from Detroit. It's still a young Michigan State team. This is a club that probably is a year away from its uh, full potential, and then with an excellent freshman recruiting class, George Pearl is very confident about the next three or four years. In fact, he uh, was self-deprecating, talking about the fact that the problem of the last couple of losing seasons was his. Uh, we'll get into that after this play, second and nine. Google may be uh, changing plays. On the roll and the throw, and again a wide open receiver. 
receiver Charles Stafford's first Notre Dame catch of the season. The junior from Bartlett, Illinois, 12 yards, and again wide open. And that's on that at the edge of that three deep zone coverage. You see, he just runs a little slant to the outside, and the corner drops. The safety doesn't go out there. And McDougal really stretches Stafford out. That is a nice catch. He'll be proud of that one for his first one. First down at the 37 yard line. Stafford now making his home in Detroit, so uh, anything against Michigan State has uh, added meaning. Big hole for Kinder in the open. And finally brought down at the 13 yard line. And Randy Kinder, even though he runs with both hands wrapped around the ball, sprinting into the open field. Told us last night, say, look, I've always been able to run the football. But here at Notre Dame, I have to learn what to do when I don't have the football. When he was in high school in East Lansing, he had the two straight 2,000-yard rushing seasons. All they did was give it to him. He didn't have to block. He didn't have to catch. He said, here at Notre Dame, you've got to be a complete back if you're going to play and play a lot for Lou Holtz. Man, young man interested in politics already. Uh, perhaps his future inside. And uh, to the 10 and to the 9-yard line goes another freshman, Mark Edwards. He was a top high school back in Ohio the last two years, 6'2 and 220 pounds from Norwood, Ohio. So Lou Holtz got the top runner out of Ohio, and Edwards, the top runner out of Illinois Farmer, and the top runner from Michigan, Kinder. So uh, he got so many top runners, they end up on defense like Jeff Burris did when he came here. The pantry is full, and it's Kinder tailback behind the freshman fullback, Mark Edwards. Kinder hit in the backfield, and that's Manson again coming in on that safety blitz that has been very effective for the Spartans. Lines up right on the corner. Well, that's been Michigan State's best defense against the run, the safety blitz. It's worked uh, every time they've called it. Uh, there's no defense to that. Not for a, a lead play. And they're doing a good job of hanging on to the ball. It's third and four for the Irish at the eight yard line. Kinder now with 60 yards rushing to lead all ball carriers and just six tries. Kinder again. And not quite to the five yard line, so stopped short of the first down. Dale Person, a junior from Chicago, went to the same high school as uh, Dick Butkus and Chris Zorich, vocational high. And uh, Lou Holtz sends in the field goal unit. Leading 16 to 7. This would, uh, even if good, not give the Irish a full two touchdown lead, so uh, always the possibility of a fake. But points on the first drive of the second half, always important. Any the, kind of points. The holder is the quarterback, Kevin McDougal. 23 yard attempt. And he just chips it up there and through. And the Irish extend their lead with 9.28 remaining in the third quarter. The Irish by 12. So the Irish now have scored on their last four possessions and lead 19 to 7. All the drama and emotion of uh, one of the great traditions in golf coming up. We'll tell you that more about that after this kick by Pendergast. Again, it's a Holman, but uh, Hickey Thompson takes it right out of his grasp. And he is spun down across the 25 yard line. It's uh, back to the Belfry next after Notre Dame football in anticipation of the Ryder Cup. Following today's game, we'll take you back to the Belfry, a preview of the 30th Ryder Cup matches, a look at this year's teams and the history of one of golf's most exciting traditions, the Ryder Cup, coming up next after the game. And Bob Trumpy's got his bags packed and he's on his way. Four. Four. <laughs> across the pond. I wish I could go with you. We'll have live coverage uh, next weekend. So Michigan State now down by 12. Underneath to Abrams and with a hand in there, Justin Goheen. There's, there was a lot of hand in there, Dick. There was a whole bunch of hand in there. Uh, this is what they started the game with. Just a little underneath stuff. Watch 54 on 49. Whoa. If they didn't have helmets on, I'd say they were dancing. <laughs> Second and ten is Noel Coleman to the left, Napoleon Outlaw to the right. 
and Abrams in motion. The play that Northwestern used against uh, the Irish. And then a beautiful setup screen to Thomas. But what a good read coming up to break up that uh, potential long gainer by Pete Bursich. Bursich playing with his father in attendance, Bob. Bob Bursich, who is a Michigan State running back under Duffy Doherty. Also a great friend of George Perlis when Bursich was growing up. He hated Notre Dame. Came down here and saw the campus, fell in love. He almost has to sneak into uh, East Lansing now anytime he wants to go. There's uh, father and son. Bob Bursich, who then went on, played a couple of years in the NFL with the Dallas Cowboys. A running back, Walt Kowalczyk, and Dean Wilkmer in that backfield. Miller underneath and broken up. Greg Lane denies Mill Coleman. Well, Dick, what's happened here now is the momentum has swung to Notre Dame. Michigan State's now got to get out of their game plan and do things that they hadn't really planned all week. This goes back to the first half, and now Notre Dame has to, on offense, just maintain control of this football game. And uh, the Spartan defense has to come up with a stop as well. Four straight scoring drives for Notre Dame. Miller back at the 35. Solani's punt with a flag down. Miller has room to return. Ooh. And with Sulik, number 37, makes another big hit along with uh, Rob Fredrickson. 35 yards on the punt, five on the return. Check the penalty. See if Lou Holtz will uh, make Michigan yeah. State kick again. Sure. sure. He wants Miller to get another chance. Oh, you, when you're covering punts, the worst thing that you can possibly do is have a penalty and cover another one. You're just a half a step slower. It just gives that. Legal procedure against the kicking team. Replay fourth down. Gives that returner just one more opportunity. Michigan State's uh, sixth penalty for 64 yards. Notre Dame four for 45. Oh well, Miller, the junior, who uh, says he'll compete. The Irish track uh, team, both uh, indoors and outdoors in the sprints. He was uh, the Texas State champion in both 100 and 200 meters. And his favorite athlete, Jerry Rice. Wearing six, that's the third number that he's carried here. If Lou Holtz convinced him six not a bad number. It counts for a touchdown. touchdown yes. <laughs> he had one and when he first came here. I think it was 83, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. so Solani to punt again. The return is on. Beautiful kick this time. Very high toward the sidelines, but a lot of the distance will be uh, negated by the kick going out of bounds. They're going to mark it all the way up to about the 45 yard line. He's still going. 45 it is. Notre Dame will get it on their end of the field at the 45, a 29 yard punt. All right, Hannah, 19 to 7, the Irish, and this game uh, started with. The Irish three and out, and they've scored every possession since. Michigan State scored on its first possession shutout since. And Beckton finding a huge hole. He's on his way. One man to beat Bell, and Bell does a great job of denying a touchdown. The longest run of the season for the Irish, 40 yards for Beckton. Watch what happens. Straight ahead blocking. Nothing fancy. Zadabeski, 67, 61, ready. They just shove those people out of the way. Straight ahead blocking, 40-yard run. Boy, they have really softened up that Michigan State defensive line. Well, Beckham will be unhappy when he looks at the films because had he gone left, he had a touchdown. Here's Willie Clark, and Willie Clark, defensive back, turned running back, although he started as a freshman at running back. Has a good gainer inside the 10 to about the seven yard line. And Wasilik makes another tackle for Michigan State. And Dick Lou Holt said, now we're going to have to open it up a little bit. Well, his offensive line has absolutely taken control of this football game. He does not have to open it up. Johnson out and uh, Miller in, flank way out to the right. Zellers and Clark behind McDougal looking for Miller. Incomplete, almost intercepted by Wasilik, number 37. Good defensive play and a flag is down. Holding on the Irish. 
comes on second and two. That was a on the incomplete pass. You look at the other scores from around the country. Notre Dame next week will be at Purdue. Of holding on the offense, repeat second down. And Michigan State with a serious challenge uh, next weekend up in East Lansing. The Central Michigan Chippewas will go in against Perlis's uh, Spartans. The rest of the country may take Central Michigan, Michigan and the Chippewas lately. George Perlis and Michigan State won't. Losing the last two seasons. And the season opener. I don't think Michigan State is looking past Notre Dame, <laughs> Central Michigan. <laughs> no, I, I, I'm afraid you're right. Speed to the right, and Johnson and Miller on second and 17, and then they give to Clark. Great job of finding an opening, and Clark is inside the 15. It appeared they had him hemmed in at the line of scrimmage, and Clark using a good move. Well, again, in an attempt to find speed in the backfield, you know, a young man who plays defense is not supposed to show this kind of aptitude for the offense. I mean, he's very patient back there. Normally, when you convert uh, a defensive back to a running back in one week, he's very impatient. This is beautifully done by Clark. Jukes outside, Jukes inside. Great acceleration. So the Spartans will look past now, third and nine. Only Sellers in the backfield. Fake to him. And then the screen. And broken up by Garnett, but no flag. Garnett reaching up. Looked for a moment that he might have gotten a piece of the helmet or the face mask, but apparently not. And that would have been tough to stop had Garnett not gotten in the way. I, Dick, I think this takes place behind the line of scrimmage. If so, you can do anything you want back there. You can tackle people and there's no penalty. Garnett, the true freshman, does an excellent job to break up that pass completion. You're right, if he catches it, they're playing the fight song for Notre Dame. Kevin Pendergast going for his third field goal. This one 31 yards. McDougal spotted. And after having trouble with the extra point to start the scoring for Notre Dame today, three in a row for Pendergast from 26, 23, and now 31 yards. Another field goal for Notre Dame with 6-10 left in the third to build a 22-7 lead. A new kickoff man, Drew Marsh, a senior from San Angelo, Texas, to kick it off this time for Notre Dame. High, short, and uh, up back right picks it up and runs into his own man and then is covered at about the 23-yard line. Freshman uh, Marvin Wright from Saginaw. Tonight, a special Saturday night lineup here on NBC. First, Dan Jillian hosts Miss America, The Untold Stories. A look at the lives of the former winners. Then the series premiere, the highly acclaimed comedy, The Mommies, followed by the premiere of Cafe American, starring Valerie Bertinelli. Then Regis and Kathy Lee host the Miss America pageant, part of American tradition all tonight. A big Saturday night on NBC. Wait till you see The Mommies. Those two women are the funniest people I've ever seen in my life. They are hilarious. And Michigan State, well, their offense is crumbling, and Pete Bursich in with a hit on the ball carrier in the backfield. No chance at all. Uh, the defense can now take a few chances with the lead that they have, with the control at the line of scrimmage. Michigan State has no chance here. Bursich, the linebacker, they make Thomas cut back. Bursich is right there. Sure tackle for Pete. Yeah. Miller. Goes cross field and complete. No. Yes, Napoleon Outlaw able to hang on. And that'll be a first down for Michigan State. Boy, it's been a while since Michigan State got a first down, too. That's a 17 yard catch. Miller rolls, commits the cardinal sin here, throw late down the middle, but he gets away with it for a first down. I remember uh, game one uh, as you look at the move made by Outlaw who steals a first down from the Irish defense. Northwestern beats Boston College 22 21 that final wow. win and uh, the Wildcats have played very well here two weeks ago with a major victory at home. First down Miller. 
the tight end, and Oregon slipping as he fell, unable to come up with it. And the ball was thrown down into the ground, too. Ludington, Michigan, Bob Oregon. Started as a fullback in state. <laughs> now, why would somebody even buy that? There, they really. This kid has no chance. You think he isn't going to be Notre Dame in the class of 2000 and something? Go Irish. Go Irish. <laughs> I'm sure he's got sweatshirts, pajamas, socks, shoes, all with Andy on the side. First drive, 74 yards, since only 78 for Michigan State. 4.54 left in the third. They're not out of this game. Oh, a fumble forced by number 90, Brian Hamilton, and Notre Dame recovers. Miller did not see the senior from Chicago, the defensive end, Hamilton. You're right. Miller was so intent on looking down the field. Hamilton, not an easy time of it. But Miller's looking to the left. Hamilton's already around the offensive tackle. And he makes the sack and the turnover for the Irish. Yeah, we no sooner got it out of our mouth that it's uh, 22 to 7, the full quarter ahead. Michigan State not out of it, and Hamilton makes the big play. It's only the second turnover of the game. Both uh, Notre Dame, an interception now, a fumble recovery, and Beckton. And suddenly the Irish finding uh, sizable holes opened in that uh, defensive line of Michigan State. Dick, back to the fumble. Here you see it's just an outside pass rush. Miller's looking so much to the right, he really doesn't see Hamilton at all. Hamilton just outrushes, just runs around the offensive tackle, strips the ball away, and makes the recovery. That's a double dip right there. He's up second down and five. And the give to the freshman and Mark. No, check that Robert Farmer and Farmer has a first down Robert to the 19-yard line and kind of like the way the young man took off of with that handoff. But really uh, got a great first step. Uh, I think any coach likes to see that in a running back. That acceleration, uh, a certain amount of abandon when you go to that line of scrimmage. You'll take your chances on what's there and both Farmer and. Kinder have done an excellent job. Yeah, they have better speed uh, than uh, the veteran Lee Beckton. Farmer was the Illinois High School Player of the Year a season ago. On first down, to Google. Oh. A little low to Miller in the flat and uh, incomplete. That was going to work. He had Derek Mays out in front of him. He was going to block on the screen. That was going to work. Google knows. And he missed a great opportunity here. Three-step drop. Oh, he hits the uh, running back. That may have upset. He hit. Uh, he hit Farmer when he stepped away from the center. That may have upset his uh, his setup to throw. McDougal. Uh, as this uh, Notre Dame team is uh, capitalizing on every opportunity. 14 for 20. Whoops. Broken play, but McDougal's going to make something big out of it. Inside the five, he steps out at the four. 15 yards to match the number on that blue jersey. Well, there's little this kid's done wrong in three weeks as the starting quarterback for Notre Dame. Told us two weeks ago he loves to throw the football. You can see 31. Farmer, I think, goes the wrong way. McDougal doesn't look like a real sprinter, but he just seems to get the job done. That's the, that's his greatest attribute. Ask uh, Gary Moeller in the University of Michigan defense. Paul Fela comes in with a full house backfield at the four yard line. First and goal for the Irish. And a half left in the third. And tripped up. Number 31, Robert Farmer, Myron Bell, a cornerback, knifing in to make the tackle. Yeah, Lou uh, told us last night, he said, you're going to see Farmer, you're going to see Zellers, and you're going to see Edwards, who comes in now. Yeah, Beckton, also Jeff Burris in that uh, full house backfield. He's uh, spreading it around today in these running backs. So Beckton at left half back. The fullback is the freshman, Edwards, and Zellers lining up at right half back in the full house. No flag, although it appeared someone was offside. Michigan State's line and just shy of the goal line. The Irish, Juan Hammonds, made the tackle. I don't understand this. Watch the defensive end near side. 
Tell him, telling me he's not in the uh, neutral zone. That's Yakini Allen. Wow. But no penalty and the ball now a half yard from a touchdown. Third and goal. I see Burris in it at one of the three running backs now. He's lined up on the left side. Burris, Edwards, Zellers left to right. And it's the fullback freshman Mark Edwards, his first Notre Dame touchdown. line again from about the second quarter on has started to shove around this Michigan State defense. No one touches Edwards until he in fact crosses the goal line. Watch the shove there by the offensive line. And for gas adds the extra point and with 226 left in the third period the Irish converting the fumble recovery into another score. It's 29 to 7. Back in South Bend, Indiana, where Notre Dame, after relinquishing the first score of the game to Michigan State, leads now 29 to 7. In fact, Michigan State had six first downs on that 74 yard drive to a touchdown in the first quarter scored by Craig Thomas. Since then, two first downs against this Irish defense. Capitalizing on Brian Hamilton's forced fumble and recovery. Under gas. To Holman. And Holman. Some running room. And on to the 35 yard line goes Steve Holman, Indiana's player of the year two years ago. Let's go to Hannah Storm in New York. Well, Dick, number 22, Boston College at Northwestern. This is BC kicker David Gordon missing a 40 yard field goal for the win. It goes wide right. The Wildcats win 22 21. You saw him play Notre Dame tough. Two weeks ago, perhaps Gary Barnett's team is turning the corner. Boston College begins the season 0-2. Dick? All right, Hannah, that's a scene you don't see often at Dyke Stadium. And the last go. decade or so, fans cheering and stopping. A Wildcat win. Meanwhile, Michigan State. Abrams, the fullback. Half the Notre Dame team there to stop him at the 40 after a gain of five. Bursich was first there. Bursich, you told us he had an interesting summer. He was a bailiff uh, county court, northern Indiana. He said the uh, most interesting uh, character that he met, a woman that had nine names. <laughs> There's a story in there somewhere. Soon to be seen, prime time television feature. <laughs> oh, racked up is Craig Thomas. No gain. Thomas uh, stopped rudely. He's a psychology major. He's battled asthma. He battled a rough start at Michigan State. He said, but even when it was going bad, I told Coach Perlis, you're not going to run me out of here. I realize how important it is to stay around, get my education. Sharp young guy. Third and five. Closer to five and six. Underneath to Coleman, and Coleman didn't go straight ahead, stopped short of the first down. Had he gone directly ahead with momentum, try to get outside for more, and is denied the first down. It'll be fourth and a yard. Sean Wooden, 22, in a defensive back, and will Pearls go for it down uh, with one minute left in the third by uh, plenty, 29 to 7. I don't think he has much choice if he wants to build some momentum back in his team for the fourth quarter. To me, like it's a very easy choice. Well, first to measurement, they did give uh, Michigan State a good spot. And they're just shy. Gives us a chance to talk about George Perlis, a popular guy with his uh, players and the alumni, but. Uh, he said that you know, part of the problems of the last couple of years are his own. Yeah, put it right on his shoulders. He said part of the trappings of winning, when you have a couple of bowl game appearances, then you're invited to coach in these college all-star games. And the, I took them. They're glamorous. They're vacations. Uh, makes you feel good. And what sacrifices is recruiting. You don't have a lot of time. Plus, you get offers from the pros. Accepted one, then turned it down. Said it's all hurt our recruiting. Jets, Green Bay, Indianapolis. 
They just sneak it ahead, and Miller has the first down as he crosses the 45 of Michigan State. Berlusendo said this year, one of the best freshman classes we have, and I'll not make that mistake of going on those glamorous trips anymore. Now, East West Shrine, North South, I'll forget the call to East Lansing. It won't be answered. He said he's, that's part of history for him. And he's got, uh, you can just tell the gleam in his eyes. Perlis knows that the future's going to be very good. He's very got good. a basis of a very good team. This one building off uh, youth. Only a few seniors on uh, either side of the ball. Bob Morgan, the tight end, on a little screen to the tight end. And the 260 pounder has about seven yards to the Irish 47 yard line. Goheen and Thomas Knight in on the tackle. You know, Dick, coaches, when the game is over, they play what if? What if we'd done this? What if we hadn't done that? And I got to be thinking that uh, the George Burtless and his staff are saying in the second quarter, what if we had gone for it on third down and two at on the plus 35, kept the momentum going? That's the last real positive thing they've done in this football game. I see the score, I think, was 7 6 Michigan State. Yes, it was. Time. Second and short. With uh, 30 seconds left in this third quarter. Darting through a small hole, Dwayne Goldborn, 190 pound uh, sophomore. Brian Young there to stop him. It could be the last play of the quarter. Michigan State appears to be in no hurry. Miller takes a look at the clock with 10 seconds and. Uh, that is apparently going to be it. So Notre Dame on a run of six consecutive possessions, scoring each time, leads 29 to 7. The end of three at Notre Dame, and we'll return after these messages from your local station. To the fourth quarter and part of the Notre Dame tradition. A little Tchaikovsky. <laughs> Line, Bobby Taylor and uh, Greg Lane with a tackle as Michigan State uh, their first trip into Notre Dame territory in the second half. It's now at the 41 yard line and a first down. I think you know the domination of Notre Dame here has taken Thomas, Greg Thomas, out of the game basically. He's an excellent running back. But yeah, 41 of Notre Dame.
reasons Notre Dame's past defense has been suspect and criticized. I have a feeling that this back four is going to be uh, Matt Lawrence's back to the offensive court. Could not agree with you more. They, uh, we talked to Jeff Burris yesterday and asked about, asked about the black tape and said, we, we call ourselves the hit squad. We started last year by a defensive back and they had a lot of time to hang everybody together. These four guys back here playing the field. Scored the last six possessions in the fourth quarter. Welcome back, Notre Dame. After seeing Michigan State score first, 29 unanswered, and they start from the 12 yard line. I think the hardest thing is I had to work very hard and I just have a very hard work ethic. And you certainly did. What about this Notre Dame defense as you look at it? And it surprised me. It reminds me a lot of the time that when I was here, uh, it's a situation where we had to get scored upon first and then we had to get that wake up call so we can go out there and play. And they had to have that today. I know uh, Mike Ditka was the man who drafted you uh, yes, and now he's gone. Uh, what do you think of him on NFL Live? <laughs> <laughs> I had a chance to watch him, and he was very funny, especially the first time he was on. He wore very nice clothes. Oh, you're commenting on his wardrobe. Very nice clothes. Let's watch this play for a second. He's going to get one outside. But, uh, getting back to the, what do you want to say to Dick what, what message do you want to send to him in his new career as a television commentator? Well, I'm sure he's going to do fine, just, just the same way he did fine with the Chicago Bears. But the thing I do want to say, I want to thank him very much for believing in me and giving me that opportunity. Uh, that's a nice comment, and congratulations to you. You're starting for the Bears now, right? What's the difference with Wanstead? I, it's more of a situation where you find a lot of learning on the field. Uh, all the coaches are very excited. They're always getting your face and yelling at you, things like that. And it's just more of a learning process on the field. It's got to be different from the Ditka that it's bad. Thanks, Thanks, Zorich. I remember a couple of years ago in the Orange Bowl, we saw Zorich uh, at the end of the game in tears, not knowing at the time that he was going to Chicago, his beloved mother passing away, unbeknownst to him the next day. He, he's such a great guy, and uh, he's kept all of his connections. He now has a scholarship that he is funding here in Notre Dame in memory of his mother. And that, he's a complete man. I, I, no matter where he goes, I'm always going to root for the Chris Zoriches of this one. And you know, he's not the only kid of that caliber. There's a history of players of the third year that Thank you. 
from the alumni clubs of uh, both Notre Dame and the Spartans of Detroit. And you see all the scores on there. And this is, you know, the real reason that they're not going to win themselves this day at South Bend. And look at this. One other thing. Look at this score down here. That's yeah, the there's one. Game, 1966, 10 10. Era. History. Yes. And Duffy. Yeah, I know. Every every player after the game there, has his picture taken next to that megaphone. That is a small replica of this trophy. I mean, Johnny Lujak. You go into Lujak's uh, den, and there he is with a picture with of the megaphone. Yeah, I can see a few of those 53 guys with the megaphone like this. This is a real reason. situation with Benton going to be interspersed in here with these young guys and also with Willie Clark. Benton has not done a bad job of running back this year. First year as a starter. He's just not been quick enough with the chance to listen to Farmer and Kinder and that Willie Clark have really exhibited a great deal more speed. Another first down for the Irish crowd. Receiver, but watch what happens uh, right there. The play is over. The points count, but this is a pick and the illegal. The Irish get away with it. Google throws the ball perfectly. The officials do not see it. And it goes to six points to lead back. Not pick up the number of the flanker.
Tracy Graham uh, and others uh, now in the field for Notre Dame as Lou Holtz uses his backup defense. And you're, you're talking about Bill Coleman. Here's a guy who is a business major, will graduate from Michigan State in three and a half years, but is going to return next year and begin a master's work. See how much healing and knitting has taken place, and then after that he'll start using light weights, and then after that he'll start throwing a little bit. So we're talking maybe three, four weeks down the road, five. Now keep checking. So he's expected back this season. Absolutely, the doctor said that. Tailbacks at Michigan State. Uh, Thomas, we saw score the first touchdown. Steve Holman and uh, Hickey Thompson, a sophomore. Uh, the uh, rushing tradition of the Spartans will certainly continue this year for the Big Ten. Oh, boy, they, they, they sure let this game get away with the tremendous start that they have almost a 74 yards. And they uh, went out of the football on their side of the football field. Notre Dame took over the two balls, more than two balls here. Notre Dame was busy using the one that was out there on the field. Oh, yeah. And they don't make the first down. Stuck in the back here is Melvin Dansby, a freshman from Birmingham, Alabama. And uh, Brian Young, one of the seniors in there to deny uh, Steve Holman. See, Baylor's looking down the field, comes off, throws it to Clark, doesn't give up on the play, goes inside. And they hit by Anderson. Ah, actually, I think they got the wrong guy. Selleck, I think, 37 was the guy. Thank you. 
taking advantage of it. I think George Perlis declared what the end of this game is going to be. I'll give it up. Don't go too hard on us, but if you've got some young guys to play like Bela, go out there and let them throw it. Basically, the second unit in. Freshman lineup behind Fela and short yardage this time as uh, Kinder with a chance for a 100 yard gain. Uh, I think Kinder's talking to some of his uh, East Lansing or Michigan State teammates or former almost teammates. Dad is a banker in Boston and his mother uh, works for the Michigan Department of Public Health. Yeah, he brought up something too that I was unaware of. I've been a lot of Just totally against the experience that athletes stay only with athletes and don't uh, learn about this the world and yeah. get a taste of uh, other experiences. The Bear Bryant Hilton and things like yeah, that. I, yeah. I just think that's wrong. I think it's denying kids a chance to really enjoy the four years of college, the academic experience. Yeah, well, I, I, I think the NCAA has said you can't do that anymore. It used to be very common back in the 60s and 70s. Oh, they were teeing off on you. Think of that time. Damian Manson, that's the best defensive play for the Spartans throughout the day. Manson's made four tackles off that corner for safety. And every time, they must be giving something away here because every single time Notre Dame is running the lead play, and before the running back has any chance to get to the line of scrimmage, Manson there to make the tackle. So on uh, fourth and one and 2.38 to go. The Irish will hunt. position apparently healthy enough and working on his punting and watching him in warm-up uh, he was uh, really rooting on some good kicks did scuff a couple but when he hit some uh, he's got great leg power and is back at the 26 for Michigan State that can win in the Big Ten, but today, something happened. They had this game in their hands, and on one decision by the coaching staff, not going for 
the first down on third and two. It supplied the entire momentum for Notre Dame for the rest of the game and took away all the momentum for Michigan State for the rest of the game. I like Michigan One play. State. Yeah, it really was interesting. Absolutely. I didn't turn on that play, did it? Pass broken up in the end zone instead of going for it on uh, third. He, uh, that was at the plus 35. Uh, it was seven to six Michigan State. Notre Dame had just scored on a drive. And suddenly it went the other way. And that's how fickle momentum is in Peter Zach and Dr. Greg Croxton uh, from Michigan State. Uh, Notre Dame helping us upstairs. And uh, catch by the freshman Nigeria Carter. Uh, selected state over Miami and Tennessee and Florida. Highly recruited. Uh, Seven seconds left in the game. A 15 yard play. Notre Dame sideline. Notre Dame and the defensive coordinator is contemplating putting in some of the starters as they do. Almost intercepted and interference is going to be called on Tracy Graham. It looked as if he made a good move. Graham, a junior from Chicago. And that ball just took a little longer to get there than Graham expected. I see Pete Bursich down here on the near sideline. It'll be a spot foul, automatic first down. There's Bursich. He's got his chin strap on, and I'm not necessarily indicative of Pete's going in. He probably goes to bed with his chin strap on. <laughs> so some of me is suspected. It looks like uh, he's going to be proud here. They don't want to miss the stage in the end zone. Just outside the team. He's a little man, 5'10 and 170. Holy he has the hands of a tight end. He matches up with Pete Crowley. He can catch it. That's seven today. I'm out. Little guys like this are guys that you root for. I mean, we, we saw, we saw Glenn Melbourne play for Stanford for a couple, three years now, playing for the Denver Broncos. Guys like that collect a lot of attention at heart and soul going inside of these defenses gets the ball. Grew up a Steeler fan, he says, admiring Terry Bradshaw and Lynn Small. And a storm will have all the scores for you. Big plays of this football Saturday. We'll hear from Lou Holtz. We'll have a possibly interview with the young freshman Randy Kinder. So stay with us. And then coming up on the hour, back to Belfry. I, one of the things I want you to do when you come back and we visit two weeks hence, yes. I want you to tell me where the bats and the belfry originated somewhere. No, I'm not. I'm actually serious. It came from somewhere. Uh, maybe it's from our head. Well, there may be bats in Belfry. I'd like I'd like to get a full view. And as opposed to the top of any church steeple you might find out in Belfry. Well, they, they could be really special bats. Let me write this down, Edward. I'll, I'll be sure to ask everybody. Somebody in a pub somewhere.
see two games Cincinnati Pittsburgh Seattle New England the early games the Browns and Raiders off to great starts and Houston and San Diego both one and one uh, neither in a position to afford a second loss early in the year so that's our lineup tomorrow with NBC and of course uh, stay with us throughout the Notre Dame season the next uh, telecast here on NBC three weeks hence when uh, the Panthers of Pittsburgh are here at Notre Dame. Six to seven, and the Michigan State band uh, in chorus across the way. Coverage 39, Keenan Tatum. Bill Coleman just runs the nice little in route. Jim Miller fires it in there. That was. That's an NFL throw. That's an NFL throw, is correct. Try for point by Stoyan. <laughs> the same number as his brother Pete. Bill Stoyanovich adds the extra point. It's 36 of 14. Uh, Dick, this, this game had great prospect from uh, the way we talked to the two. Coaches and coaching staffs and the players we talked to, this had great prospect. I thought this was going to be a very tightly contested football game. Well, uh, those watching around the country uh, would be uh, foolish to underestimate what Burles has going at, at Michigan State. This is just a terrific game again by Notre Dame. Many felt after being so high to upset Michigan to Ann Arbor. It would be uh, quite understandable had uh, Notre Dame bounced a bit today and not played at that level, but they came back with another big, big game. Yes, and, and you know, Dick, if you look at the three games they've won, this one included, they've won all three in a different fashion. Uh, in the first game against Northwestern, the defense took over the football game. In the second game against Michigan, the special teams and big plays won the game. And here, it was relentless offense of Notre Dame just pounding at the line of scrimmage. That's bad news for upcoming opponents. You can't really characterize this football team. They do so many things so well. I think that even the hardiest Notre Dame fan has to be positively surprised by Kevin McCall's no question about it. I mean, he's saying at the outset of the program, he had 21 attempts coming into this season. So it lines up the good hands team out for Notre Dame as they look for the onside kick. And he uses the left foot, and it's well covered by the Irish. Number 68, Jeff Brady, a junior. Covers, and uh, player two, and uh, Consecutive win. 13 seconds to go. Michigan State uh, will leave with a little better taste, getting a touchdown uh, in the final seconds. State started their first possession with a touchdown, and then uh, nine possessions later, they score again in their last Goodness. possession. That's taken a football team out of its game. And in between the game scored in the second and second half of the third round, it's professional. He's going to knock that ball with six seconds to go. This telecast presented by authority of the University of Notre Dame, intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the University of Notre Dame is prohibited.
team. The Irish are three and oh, let's get on to John Dockery. Well, he, John's got to sort his way through to get to Lou Holtz. And I think he has about arrived. Coach, um, just talking about Trumpy and Dick Enberg, and we were looking at the quarterback situation. And three weeks into the season, could you have expected any more from your senior quarterback? We've never had a bad quarterback. We said that all year. Uh, he's done a nice job. We were only three games in the season. We've got a long ways to go. Uh, if he'll continue to improve, we got a chance. Are you happy with his development and his play? Oh, yeah, he's a beautiful young man. I'm happy for him because he's been here and he's been patient and uh, he, he felt he could do the job. He's done a nice job for it. You also told us that you were looking for some help at running back, some young talent. Uh, very good. What about your young runners? I thought that our, our runners played very well. I was really impressed with all our backs. I thought Willie Clark showed some good flashes and Kinder and Farmer and Edwards. It was nice to see a lot of the young players come to the forefront. Certainly a good game. Congratulations, Coach. Well, thank you. It's nice to win. Okay, back to you, Dick Enberg. All right, Doc. Today, Chevrolet players of the game then for Notre Dame, Randy Kinder, the freshman with 94 yards rushing and Mill Coleman for Michigan State eight catches one for a touchdown in conjunction with this program Chevrolet contributes two thousand dollars to the National Association of Student Financial Aid Administration.